Thank you.
Good afternoon, Tea Timers. We hope everyone is doing well today. Welcome to Tea Time Tuesday. Such a beautiful Tuesday afternoon here in the yes. historic district of Concord, North Carolina. We welcome you from the Renewal Center. It's yeah. just a beautiful afternoon. And myself and Patrick are here to welcome you to a Thank wonderful you. day. And you know what? We are here at the Renewal Center just enjoying a cloudless day. It is the sun is shining so brightly. And we're so excited to see all of our tea timers out there. We see uh, Dr. Brown, our dad is, is, is in. We see uh, Keisha. Hello, Keisha. Hello, Miss Anita Andrews. Thank you for joining us today. It's good to see you. We hope that you'll enjoy our time for Tea Time Tuesday. And while you guys are out there, we want you to go ahead and like and share. Invite your friends to join us today. We are in for a treat. Go ahead, like, it's, like the, it, it says right there, go ahead and tag others. Invite them to come in and join us. And also we are, hello, Keisha, how are you doing this afternoon? And we are streaming live over there on YouTube. So if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, today would be a great day to go ahead and do it. Go right over there and click that button, subscribe, and just be a part of our Tea Time community and actually the Renewal Center community over there on YouTube. So we welcome you and we thank you for subscribing. And so also while you all are coming in today, just a wonderful time here at the Renewal Center, how we just enjoy hospitality. And Tea Time Tuesday is all about pausing, resetting, and building resilience. And I'm telling you, that's what we do all the time when we come on here at uh, Tea Time Tuesday. And so while you guys are taking the time, go ahead and share this on your social media platforms. We want everybody to know that Tea Time Tuesday is in session and mm -hmm. we are live and streaming. And so actually, while you all are doing that, we're going to take a moment to just uh, again welcome our tea timers and such a great Tuesday afternoon it is. We're going into the month of March. We're already here. And since we're here, we're going to be talking about National Women's History Month. And we love to celebrate that here at the Renewal Center. This mm -hmm. is a wonderful time of observance and honoring the many contributions that women have made to society, to culture and to history. And we are excited about celebrating this great observance. So this is a great time. This is a great day and a great month to share this opportunity with others to let them know that we are celebrating all of the contributions that they're making, even in real time. So this is a great right. thing. Hello, Michelle. Hello. Good to see you too out there. It's good to see everybody. Also, we see our other director, Hope Milton, is watching. It's good to see you too. And so we just are very thankful for a wonderful day. And, you know, while we're doing that, let's uh, get your tea ready. Actually, if, if you're new to Tea Time Tuesday, we always bring our journals and our tea. And so, hello, Hop. It's good to see you, too. Patrick, what are you drinking? I know I have, um, let's see, what do I have today? I almost forgot. Oh, delightful tea or some kind of delightful tea. <laughs> so I, I am doing uh, hazelnut coffee. I I do have what? tea here, though. Uh, yeah, so I will be doing tea okay. here in a moment, probably just my mid, a little bit later. But right now, I've got my hazelnut. Coffee. Okay. Well, I tell you what, do we have any coffee drinkers out there? You guys go ahead and let us know what you're drinking. Hello, Living in Faith Every Day. It's good to see you, too. What kind of tea or coffee or water? What is your drink of choice, your tea of choice today? Go ahead and put it in the chat. And just a heads up, we would love everybody to join in. Hello, Miss Anita is having green tea with ginger. That sounds good. Hope mm -hmm. is having hibiscus iced tea. All mm -hmm. right. Water. Water. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> oh, God. Keisha's not drinking. She doesn't have anything with her today. And Michelle is joining you, Patrick, with hazelnut Thank coffee you. this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with this afternoon. Okay, yeah. so I'm telling you, I'm excited today. We have a treat for everyone with our renewal practices. So please invite as many people as you can, because we're looking forward to this today. And so uh, Dr. Brown, he's coming in with, with his uh, tea of choice today. His tea of choice is unsweetened iced tea. Okay, okay Dad. All right. Okay. Unsweetened. Okay, now. 
That's good too. All right, I'm tweeting. <laughs> and I'm also noticing that Gerard Brown is watching. Thank you for joining us today for Tea Time Tuesday. This is really great. It's good to see everybody. And mm -hmm. so while you guys are taking the time to do that, we're going to go on talking about our tea of the week, which is jasmine tea. And I'm sure some of you are lovers of jasmine tea. I know I like jasmine tea. Jasmine tea is considered to be one of the most popular teas worldwide. And it originated from China and is cultivated in the Fujian region of China. Jasmine tea is made from the scented jasmine blossoms, which is infused traditionally with the camellia sensus uh, leaves, or you can mix it with green tea, oolong tea, or white tea. You can enjoy jasmine tea hot or cold, just steep it, and then add your sweetener of choice. So the Renewal Center's tea of the week, jasmine tea. Mm. Okay. I like jasmine tea. Do you like jasmine tea? I have had it before, yeah. Yes. Okay. Very, very, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I'm enjoying some tea over here, and I see there's some other people coming in in the chat with their teas. Oh, hi, Nicole. What are you having hey, today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> English breakfast tea. English all right. breakfast tea. Well, all right. Well, while everybody's getting situated, and uh, like we said, our tenants here for Tea Time Tuesday is to pause to take time to reset in the afternoon and mm -hmm. then also to build resilience. And so these three elements we're going to focus on calming ourselves, getting to a place of self-awareness while we just take a moment and locate ourselves. So locating ourselves means we're just going to sit and relax just for a quick second and relieve the tension from our shoulders and our hands and just focus on our video for a minute. Maybe you can even do some deep breathing. Okay. Well, we hope everyone is in a, a place of calm and are relaxed. And our executive director, Patrick J. Brown, is over there. He's still renewing himself, yes. <laughs> locating yes. himself over there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And go right ahead, Patrick. We're going to take it away now for our renewal practices. All right. Thank you so much, Carmela. I Welcome everyone again. Thank you so much for connecting with us here on Tea Time Tuesday. All is exciting about pausing and resetting. And so when we locate ourselves, we're centering ourselves, we're grounding ourselves. I was just imagining the rest of the meetings that I need to have today and really focusing more on positivity and thinking through my vision of what needs to get done. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to take a pause to really uh, just center myself in that, <clears throat> locate where I am today. So I hope everyone has your tea time journal. And in the spirit of our Women's History Month today, I wanted to hone in on some renewal practices that will help you um, as women specifically, but they're principles that I think we can all apply uh, that I think will be very helpful in terms of your own growth and expansion. So today's renewal practice specifically is about cultivating personal and professional growth in Women's History Month. So we're gonna talk about cultivation. 
when you think of the word cultivation, what comes to your mind when you think about the word cultivation? And again, a renewal practice is something that we're going to implement, not just have the knowledge of. We want to implement this. So when you think about the word cultivation, if you're out there in the audience, go ahead and just put the word cultivation in the in the comments and then give us what comes to mind when you think about cultivation. And again, this is about building resilience. So we're pausing so that we can all strengthen one another in this time of professional and personal growth for Women's History Month. Cultivation. Carmela, when you think about the word cultivation, what, what does that generate in you uh, when you think about the word cultivation? Well, cultivation to me is providing a place where you can thrive to build growth. It's to take the, I would say, a, the, uh, the environment would have to involve some TLC mm -hmm. to really provide that place where you can thrive and, and grow and do well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, those are the necessary tools to bring that about would be in Good. that would be cultivation. When I think of cultivation, I think about placing like a, a delegate flower with some soil in my hand and it requires care mm -hmm. and it requires attentiveness. Mm -hmm. um, you don't just leave it over there in the corner and like, all right, I'm not going to check on you anymore. I'm not going to check the soil. I'm not going to check to see if you have water or light. So to me, I think about attentiveness. And so today's uh, renewal practice, uh, Carmela, is about really focusing on how are we cultivating environments, atmospheres, practices, approaches to our personal and our professional growth? What does that really look like? And I wanted to start that off today uh, with that in mind, considering that we are in Women's History Month. Let's see what's coming in and some of the chats come out. I'm going to bring those up. And maybe you can uh, share those with us. OK. All right. Miss Anita, she's saying cultivation to her is I think of shaping and establishing. Mm -hmm. This is good. And Nicole is saying cultivating and gardening is care specific to encourage growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That word care. Living in faith every day says cultivation. Providing an atmosphere and nutrients for a healthy environment for growth. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. These are good. And Keisha is saying cultivation is conditioning for growth and for something uh, to flourish. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. this is good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, everyone. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you for those thoughts and those perspectives. And as you have placed those in the chat, and for those that you are coming on, Please feel free to place your comments as well on when you think about cultivation, what comes to your mind, what comes to your heart. And also think about what environment are you creating in your own life for cultivation? What space in your home is for cultivation? Mm -hmm. What conversations are you having that's for cultivation? What conversations do you need to have for cultivation? So that's what we're discussing. What do we need to stop doing that does not foster cultivation? So we're going to address all those perspectives today in our renewal practices. I'm going to give you some general principles to help us along the way with these renewal practices. So let's go to the first one. The first one is practicing self-awareness. Now, now, when we talk about self-awareness, I want you to think about this, about recognizing that energy, energy shapes your character and reputation. So in other words, what you bring is what's going to happen. What you bring with you, remember we're all energy, right? Matter, energy, atoms, molecules. So we bring a certain energy into our character and into our reputation. So what energy are we bringing into the rooms, into the spaces and into the places that we're in? And then also recognize that there is a residue that comes with that energy. So when people encounter us, they're encountering our attitude, they're encountering how we are, who we are, all that shapes our character, but it also shapes our reputation. And so I said, well, self-awareness means that I'm able to recognize what I'm actually doing. So I want us to consider that as, as we're honoring Women's History Month, Right now, your decisions are, are establishing history. <laughs> right now, 
the decisions you're making, what you're doing right now is actually making history. So I want you to consider as a renewal practice, recognizing that your energy, it, it shapes your character, it shapes your reputation. So in other words, when you leave a place, what do people think of you in terms of what you, how you've impacted them? And so it's important that we recognize that as part of self-awareness. So that's first renewal practice today is about, I want us to think about, be aware of our posture and how we're devoting our time and energy to make positive impacts wherever we can, instead of looking at the obvious of what's not happening. It is so easy. The human brain is, is wired many times for the negative. It immediately goes there. What's not happening? What's not happening in the project? What's not happening in my life? What's this is taking place? So it's important that we rewire that. And that self-awareness helps you step away many times and recalibrate how we're bringing our energy into a certain space. So tea time is if you're out there, I want you to think about this as a renewal practice, because again, what's today's focus is cultivating personal professional growth. What are your thoughts on this first principle? as far as practicing self-awareness and the two sub-practices of recognizing energy that shapes your character and reputation and in shifting your posture and devoting your time and energy to make positive impacts wherever you can. So I'm gonna pause it for a moment and let's hear from you tea timers and Carmela, any thoughts on this first one regarding practice self-awareness in these two practices? Absolutely, I really like this uh, because it goes back to uh, Women's History Month, which you're talking about, a part of it is the contributions that we make. And mm -hmm. so what are we contributing? If we're self-aware of where we are, we're self-aware of the choices that we're making, the decisions that we make, uh, like you said, to leave the place in a more positive uh, light. So when you exit or when you exit a space or exit mm -hmm. a place, are you leaving like the residue? Are you leaving productivity? Are you leaving a place, uh, leaving a place in a more positive state. And so bringing all of who you are, but in a positive light, uh, noticing when you need to self-correct too. Mm. This is what I'm thinking as you talk about self-awareness, you may be in a place, okay, I need to self-correct <laughs> mm. so that I can make a, a positive contribution to wherever I'm at, you know, where whatever space or place that I'm in. And so I like that when you're talking about self-reflection, um, helps us to be more productive, helps us to look at the choices we're making and to look at the positive aspect of what we're contributing. Mm -hmm. And that means, you know, having a level of self-confidence and believing in what we're contributing, that it matters. Absolutely. And so I, I like that. I thank you for sharing that. I, I, I really think it's important from a renewal perspective that we really think about what are we devoting our time and energy to? which means yeah. what's going on in our thinking, what's going on in our feeling, what's going on in our doing, and mm. ensure that we shift that posture, which is, means uh, what, what are we elevating in our thoughts? What are we elevating above the positive impacts wherever we can? So practicing self-awareness is important. Yeah. All right. We got some more comments coming in. Chanel is sharing something. Mel, you want to read this one about cultivation? Okay. Hi, Chanel. Okay. And so Chanel is sharing that cultivation is being present and attentive to my thoughts, my emotions, my actions, and consciously nurturing positive qualities and behavior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. So I again, like oh, no, this is really good. I, I'm just really, really thinking about the word conscious lead nurturing which means i'm very deliberate intentional and aware i love yeah. that and then you mentioned self-correct as well because there are times we need to step back and look at what am i actually doing here yeah what am i actually doing here in order for me to reroute and self-correct so thank you so much yeah. for sharing that living mm -hmm. in faith every day says i'm always cognizant that first impressions have a lasting impression so it's yeah. important i show up as my authentic self and leave behind seeds of inspiration, motivation, and encouragement. Very good. Thank you for sharing like that, that with us. Awesome. Let's go to number two. So number one, again, practice self-awareness. I want everybody to look at what do you bring into the spaces that you're in? What 
energy do you bring into the spaces that you're in? Because we have our perceived self, we have, and we also have the self that nobody knows. <laughs> and there's That's also true. the self that everybody else sees. Right. That's why it's important to have self-awareness and reroute many times how we show up and why we show up the way that we do. All right, let's go to our next one. Reality test your opportunities. Now, again, this is an empowering renewal practice. Reality test your opportunities. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, here's what we mean. Maintain open dialogues about your values and priorities. Maintaining open dialogues about values and opportunities. Why are we doing this? Well, we, we do that so that you can understand your organization and those that are around you. That's what that means. Understanding your organization and the values, what's happening around you. So you're, you're open about your values and your priorities, but you're also understanding what's happening in your organization. So in other words, keep the curiosity flowing. Keep the curiosity flowing. If I can just use that as a, mm -hmm. as a, a term, because if, if when we understand the importance of, again, reality testing opportunities, it's looking at where I am and really asking the question, am I maintaining open dialogues about my values and priorities, but also do I really understand my organization and do I really understand those that are around? So that means your direct boss, your supervisor, your manager, your leader, your director. Mm, I like that. Understanding the needs of the business as they shift. Really think about that. Again, as you consider Women's History Month, think through the ways that you're maintaining open dialogue. Go ahead, Mel, you were saying you like that. Go ahead, please, please share. I like that because it, uh, you know, when you were saying keep the curiosity going, if you're in a group mm -hmm. or just like you were saying, wherever you may be, it's just asking your question, what's happening, asking yourself questions like, what's the culture? What, what's the climate? What's, you know, what's happening right now? Um, what's new? You know, what's new? Uh, what's changing? And maybe how can I get aligned or how can I get on board with what's happening? Because I, I believe if, you, if you're keeping the curiosity there and you're able to uh, you're able to, to make the shift that you need, you're also able to regain a, a level of mutual understanding as well because mm -hmm. you're honoring yourself. And mm -hmm. then you're also looking to see well, what's happening in the climate here, what's happening in the culture here and how can I you know, align to it? And, you know, how can I be effective in that way? So I like mm -hmm. I like the question of how can I remain curious? Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, because if we are curious. We end up staying in a tunnel mm -hmm. and, and we're not aware of what we're bringing and we're not aware of what others are bringing. Mm -hmm. and we're not aware of what's happening in the organization. So if we want to grow. We want to expand. That it's important that we really reality test your opportunities. Make sure you understand the needs of the business as they shift. Let me bring that up one more time. Understand what's happening in your organization. Understanding what, what are the needs of the business are. And as they shift, everybody write in, align your skills and instincts. Put that in the comments, everyone. Align your skills and instincts. Why is that important that we do that? Because what that does is, we, you learn to begin to understand that as you align uh, your skills and your instincts, what will happen is your, your stepping forward is showing that you appreciate the shared mission in the organization as well. Mm, so let's just take this time to self-reflect on this, okay? And again, out there, hope it put up self-awareness. Absolutely, that's where we are. Self-awareness, everyone. We, we, we're going to do that. That's that first principle. Then we're going to focus here on reality testing, aligning re skills and instincts. That's right. Aligning skills and instincts. What does that mean to you? And if you're not necessarily doing that, all right, or put it in as, as a regular practice to align your skills and your instincts so that you can understand the needs of the business. Know what's taking place in your firm. Know what's happening in your in your organization. Understand what's happening in your association. 
maintaining open dialogues about values and priorities because they're going to shift. So think about the last time you had a conversation about the business needs of your organization and think through, am I aligning my skills and my instincts with what's really taking place here? Mm. That's a renewal practice because that's professional and it's personal growth. Yeah, I was just... Yeah. Thoughts on that, Melvin, right ahead, please. Oh, no, I that you were right on our target with that. As soon as you said that, my mind went right to personal development. You know, when you're sharpening yourself and, you you know, are coming into alignment of what's there. I mean, perhaps there's some some things that you can bring to the table that you've already learned. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some things that in, in your own bag of professional development that you can share, but it may have not been an opportune time. Or it could be an, uh, an opportunity to sharpen up some things and perhaps get uh, another level of professional development or personal mm -hmm. development. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Hope says here, she says, this is a must for my current role. Yeah. Absolutely. So we want to align your skills. I, and also, as another practice, Carmel, I want to dig a little deeper in, into this. Like, when's the last conversation have we had about the business needs it might even be if you're if you're running your own business what are the needs of your clients the needs of your consumers the needs of your customers the needs of your atmosphere and having an open dialogue about that and then mm -hmm. align your skills and your instincts with what's happening i like that because if we don't what ends up happening carmela is that we can become obsolete in what we're doing so mm -hmm. I think this is a good opportunity for us to really think about that. And if you haven't had a conversation as of late, uh, put in regular practice uh, to have conversations about what's happening in the business and really engaging in dialogue that I think is going to be very really helpful for you. So again, reality test your opportunities is our second renewal practice. Reality test our opportunities. See, and this is what's going to cause you to expand and grow and really align to uh, understanding what's happening as they shift. And these are organic conversations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're structured, but this should be a regular, engaging dialogue because what ends up happening is you begin to recognize you have certain skills that you bring to challenges and you can overcome those challenges on behalf of the business. That's how you can position yourself for growth and expansion. All right. So again, what are we talking about today? Cultivation. Cultivation means you're actively working on this and cultivation means that you may not be actively working on it, but it's part of your development plan and what you want to do for yourself to be able to expand. And we started out with practices of awareness, we're talking now about reality test your opportunities. Here's the next one. Be flexible and foundational. Be flexible and foundational. Renewal practice number three. Embrace opportunities beyond your comfort zones and beyond the confine of your role specs. All right, let's, let's really rest in this one as a renewal practice, Carmela. Mm -hmm. Being flexible yet being foundational. Now, I'm going to take my time with that when I say be flexible. That means, you know, not allowing personality to rule your learning capability. Not allowing personality or well, that's not my role. Well, again, we want to ensure embrace opportunities beyond comfort zones. Because you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know many times how you can grow if we don't move beyond our comfort zones. I happen to be a very strategic person. That's one of my strengths. Sometimes I'm not as detailed as I need to be. So, because I recognize that, now what I'm doing is I'm specifically saying, I gotta make sure, and it was very simplistic, but I began to put in my schedule twice per day, in the morning and in the eve, in the afternoon, certain things I needed to do in order for me to be more detail oriented with a particular task. 
because generally I'm in strategic roles, but because I'm required to expand what I'm presenting, I had to force myself into, Patrick, you're gonna need to make some adjustments with this. And so I made some adjustments in order for me to understand that it wasn't about just me, but other people need me to show up in this space because of my leadership responsibility, if that makes sense. Yeah, I like that. I like that. If I may say, um, I, I like this because my mind goes, you know, I'm very image and imagery person, but my mind goes to a plant that is in a box that is mm. that's in a pot that is outgrowing the pot. And, you know, sometimes you have to expand the pot too and yes. go beyond, you know, the comfort of where you are, because if you don't, we know what happens <laughs> to the, to the poor plant. But mm -hmm. one of the things I like about this is when you are expanding yourself and I've speak for myself, it's like taking the initiative to, you know, to learn something new and it builds tenacity mm -hmm. because I think in the, in the forefront of our mind is what, well, what if, what if we fail or what if we, what if that happens and the what ifs come up, but then what if you do well, what if you learn something new, what if you actually stretch beyond where you mm -hmm. are and new doors open? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a way I think it's a way of looking at this uh, being flexible, but still being foundational. But you're embracing new opportunities beyond where you are. I mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I like that you're sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And I do want to encourage us that when I had to embrace opportunities, it was organic because what I had to learn was, OK, let me make a shift here in terms of how I operate. So sometimes mm -hmm. you have to it's encouraging to. Uh, like you said earlier, use the word self-correct. Okay, yeah. let me let me readjust, let me self-correct because I know that um, I'm understanding the needs of the business and others have different needs that I want to ensure that I align my skill sets and my instincts to that. And it helps you be more preemptive and more proactive. Yeah, yeah. And so like it's important for that. So again, open your mind, raise your hand, Offer to be helpful with someone new and yet unknown. Mm. So it's not only just about embracing opportunities beyond comfort zones, but mm -hmm. it's also opening your hand. Raise your mind, open your mind, excuse me. Raise your hand. Offer to be helpful with someone new and, and, and yet unknown, something that is unknown. Mm. Widen the lanes. Hmm. Widen yeah. the lanes. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is these are just renewal practices to help you and help us, specifically within Women's History Month, to begin to think through what lanes are being widened right now. Or what yeah. lanes do you need to wind that you're aware of? Now, if you're already there, then this is not for you if you're already there. This is for those that recognize the space for growth, okay, and the need for growth. It's not for those that have already gotten to that place. This is for those. That are that that realize, hmm, I need to step away and look at myself in a way that I haven't before, and that helps you become continue to grow. I like to use the word measurable progress in reasonable time, and so uh, my that. progress is measurable progress is measurable. reasonable time, and and so I'm seeing that in my life. Why? Because I'm being flexible, and when I say foundational. That means stay true to your integrity. That's what I mean by that. I put that in there because the goal is not to make people change their, their, the core of who they are in terms of, of who they are, not that part. Authenticity is always going to be there, but you can still be authentic and still recognize the need to evolve. I like I like that you're sharing that. If, if I could jump in, because what you're saying, when you said measurable progress and reasonable time, it, mm -hmm. it kind of took me back to what you were just saying about development plan. Yes. Mm. Having a, mm. a development plan to expand. So you yeah. have a little, somewhat of an expectation to expand yourself somewhere where, you know, where you are. Yeah, that's good. Creating you know, Mel, I had to make that adjustment. Good goodness. I had to, I had to make an adjustment to how I was not detailed because I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, I'm detailed about certain things. Some things I just wasn't, and I was realizing, uh, Patrick, you're missing some stuff. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to do that, I had to, like you mentioned, self-correct. Self-correct. I made those adjustments. Then I began to see measurable progress in reasonable time. 
I like that. We got some comments coming in. I'm sorry I've missed a few. Let's let's bring a few of these comments up. Um, we're hearing from folks here. We've got here. a lot in the, in the chat right. today. Someone says here, training is way outside of my comfort zone. So they're taking a training and it's stretching them beyond their comfort zone. All right. Thank you for sharing. You want to read the next one, Samantha? Go ahead. Okay. Michelle, she's saying, yes, there's freedom and growth and expansion. Exactly what we're talking about. There's mm -hmm. a freedom there. And Hope is saying, for me, leaving the comfort zone stimulates creativity to meet new possibilities. So then mm -hmm. it's a creative way. You start to become creative. Thank you for sharing that. Keisha, yes, there's a stretching. There's that expansion. Mm -hmm. And Miss and Miss Anita, she's saying, widen the lane. That definitely gives new meaning to stay in your lane. Don't mm -hmm. be stagnant. Expand your lane. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And Absolutely. Sure. Thank you for sharing that. Because when I said widen your lane, that's exactly what I was thinking yeah. in terms of, you know, stay in your lane. Yeah, there are times we need to, but then there are times we need to widen our lane. That's right. Say, Let me grow. I've been on this path. I'm going to expand my capacity just a little Ooh. bit. I'm yeah. still in the lane. I'm just widening it a little bit. A few, a few more areas of growth and opportunity. Again, everybody write in measurable progress in reasonable time. But put that in the comments, everyone measurable progress in reasonable time is important for us in order for us to have this type of growth and again what are our renewal practices for today it is about personal and professional growth in women's history month that's the emphasis today all right we want to ensure that we're able to do that all right let's go to our next one here all right we said be flexible and foundational our next renewal practice is self-promote mindfully Self-promote mindfully. Now, what does this mean when we say self-promote mindfully? This has nothing to do with social media. This has nothing to do with selfies. When we say self-promote, this is how do we communicate what you're accomplishing? Ensure others see your full capabilities within your organization. This is not the time to shy back about what you're accomplishing and ensuring others see your full capabilities all right make sure that your boss is aware of your work i know sometimes people are quick to move on to the next thing hold on a second i want to have a discussion about what i'm accomplishing not about what i'm not doing because again when we hear the word feedback sometimes we immediately go to the negative when it, we can't hear it because we have to redefine carmela and redescribe what feedback is and ensure that it's really about how do we self-promote mindfully? That means that I, I'm, I'm letting others know they're aware of my work, the value. It's in, and recognize the importance of it. I like that. See, you know, yeah. we got to build a track record. Don't, don't fall silent when the moment arrives to document and share your progress. Yeah, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. When it's time for you to document and share your progress and go after the next level of growth, the next opportunity that might be there for you, or even being promoted or even expanding the scope of your work. That's not build your track record and you do it by knowing how to communicate what you're accomplishing and ensuring that others see your full capabilities. Now, somebody may say, well, that's kind of arrogant. You know, um, you know you're a self promote. No, this is not about that. I'm talking about the importance of having your earnest communication forward and you first of all celebrating what you're doing mm -hmm. you're able to celebrate and self-congratulate yeah, all right that and it, that does not backfire some people may say well it does backfire you got to stay gracious and you know yes there's humility but when it comes to uh many times in our corporations and our organizations we only get one time per year where you do an annual review when you should be monthly reviewing yourself quarterly reviewing yourself weekly if you need to or mid during the year you can take ownership over that whole entire process i see you shaking your head go ahead mel i don't know what i'm talking about yeah because <laughs> you know i'm very passionate about that part uh yeah. you know i, I want to go back to the fact that you said value i don't know if, if those of you out there have picked pick that word up as patrick was sharing that but one of the things that I, I am adamant about is documentation is so important mm. because 
uh, it's so much value. And sometimes we don't even realize the value that we have in just some of the skills that we've acquired. So what about the skills that you uh, have acquired? You know, yeah. you may not some of your soft skills, transferable skills, all these skills may not, you know, immediately come to your mind. But as we're sitting there thinking, you know what, that certification or even what I just, um, you know, a training I acquired last mm -hmm. week or last year or last month, mm -hmm. just start looking at what what are these type of um, skills that I've acquired? How are they how are they um, lending to the organization or lending to the group that you're part of or what mm -hmm. strengths have you acquired? Because I know for a fact that sometimes you may acquire a strength. And you may just negate it for a while, and then you forgot that you've even you've even gained it because you right. forgot to write it down or exercise right. it more. So I think that that's when you said value that really jumped out at me because oh, yeah. the things that we gain are valuable. Yes, They're, they are valuable. Absolutely, Carmela. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I, I I'm so grateful that you you are bringing that back up because if you don't document, it didn't happen. Right. And if you don't communicate that documentation, no one else knows. No one knows. <laughs> so I want you to think about what you're documenting. I want you to think about what you're communicating. I want, I want us to think about when it's time, when that moment arrives, you can share your progress. That is important that we're able to do that. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't had a conversation and it's now March and you have not had a documentation conversation with those that are leaders in your organization, you need to have it. Well, it's not that time of the year. Well, it's that time of the year for me <laughs> because I want to put into practice that as part of, of uh, a regular ongoing conversation. And it may not be with everyone, but it could be with that one leader that you report to or the team members so they can have that awareness. And then, of course, you put that in, in motion. Make sure that it's valid. Make sure that it's somewhere in your OneNotes or your OneDrive or Maybe it's in a, in a documentation list that you internalize and that you look at on a regular basis. And it's OK to self-promote in a mindful way. In a mindful way so that you can know how you're contributing, because people will have, I would say, chat room conversations, ping conversations, phone conversations without the documentation. And then it's like, well, what did you actually do? Well, we had that discussion because that happened right here. See, so it's also important to have that as well. Again, we're talking about Women's History Month and personal professional growth. So this is more of an empowerment exercise as well. I hope that everyone's considering it from that perspective. Go ahead, Mel, you were saying something. Mm -hmm. Well, I just think that not just for that respect, but also for personal confidence building, mm. just looking at some of the th uh, things that you've acquired, I think it helps build confidence as well mm. in Very yourself. Good. We got some comments are coming in as well. We've seen measurable progress in reasonable time, documenting, sharing your progress. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Recognizing the value of strengths and skills that they know when to share. Uh, thank you so much. And yes, it is a safeguard, absolutely. Why? It helps you with your documentation process. These are real conversations and it helps you, all right? And absolutely to what you just said, Carmela, personal confidence building. Mm -hmm. That helps you navigate any type of current that might push against your way. All right. Mm -hmm. Any current that tries to pull you out, you can continue to build your personal confidence. So these are good for no practices. All right. All right. We got another comment coming in. You want to go ahead and read this? Dr. Brown, our dad. Okay. He is saying continuing education is integral for one remaining current in his or her profession documentation reveals one is staying current mm. that's right staying relevant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. staying relevant all right good conversation today all right so we've gone yeah. through that we've gone through self promoting mindfully here's the next one master the art of storytelling now i, I added this and i wasn't going to get to this because i know in the interest of time but i'm going to take up my full time today and we're going to rest in this <laughs> Locate yourself in the art of storytelling. How do you tell your stories? Why? Because if you don't tell your story, somebody else will tell it the wrong way. That's good. You got to tell your story. <laughs> the way you need to say it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we got to work on mastering storytelling. Um, 
you know, Vera Nazarian says the world is shaped by two things, stories told and the memories they leave behind. Wow. So I think it's important. And, and I know in organizations, many times we don't really intentionally talk about the power of storytelling. We don't consider that as much. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about this as a renewal practice. Well, Patrick, what does this have to do with Women's History Month? What does this have to do with personal professional growth? It has to do with considering your audience, beginning at the beginning, framing your experiences in a way that others can hear. Because when you're telling stories, there's a richness that comes with your story. There's a, an effervescence of who you are that comes with your story. There's a, a blooming that comes with your story. You can identify competencies with your story. Yeah. He said, well, Patrick, you perked up a bit. Yes, okay. I did. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> because your story matters. <laughs> yes. And if you don't tell your story, somebody else is going to tell their story. And you right. can't be mad when they hogging, talking about their story because you did not tell yours. Now, what do I mean by telling your story? I'm talking about how we begin to frame what's the audience that I'm in and think about my audience, what it is that I, how I connect with those audiences. And I begin at the beginning, here's my journey in my job, in my life, in my career, in this position, in this area, I'm framing my experiences in a way that if I, if I frame them, that others can benefit from, from those frames. Let's meditate on this, folks. Frame your experiences. I'm going to sit with this one. Okay? Very important. All right, let's keep rolling. And I know I'm getting over time, so I want to ensure that we're able to maximize these last points. Carmilla, any ideas, any thoughts on storytelling that you want to share? I was thinking as you were had that quote sitting up there on the screen, mm -hmm. I said, you know, I thought about that because what we have to contribute is really the essence and the extension of who we are mm -hmm. and who best to tell it, but our, you know, ourselves. And uh, I really appreciate that because it's what you're lending to the world around you when you share, uh, you know, what, what, what you can contribute. And as you frame your experiences, you'll be able to frame it in such a way that is creative in a way that uh, will bring about change. Well, like, like we do here at the Renewal Center, re reforming culture. You never know what you'll be able to do just by sharing it the way that you need to share your story. Mm -hmm. which is a part mm -hmm. of growing because we don't want to forget what we, you know, the things we've overcame. We don't want to forget the things that we've learned and the things that we want to learn and the conversations that we've had, or, you know, the dialogue that we've had, that shaped us, our experiences. Yeah. I think it all matters and it brings value. Right. And, you know, even in our professional lives, when you're doing a performance evaluation, mid-year review, end of year review, an evaluation, that's okay. a story. That, that I'm learning to share. And we, it's important that we learn how to share our stories succinctly. You know, I read a book years ago, how to say something in 30 seconds or less or something. It was accuracy, brevity, clarity, ABC. You yeah. know, am I accurate about what I'm saying? Am I brief? And I'm a very clear. And so I think it's important that we learn to really master storytelling where it's not all long and drawn out, but we're able to really tell our story, whether it's written or it's actually being spoken. So storytelling is all those different aspects and many different ways of sharing with others. And we get the best of each other when we yeah. learn how to document and share and listen to other mm -hmm. people's stories as well. All right, my last uh, renewal practice for the day as we wrap things up is build your power trio is what I call this. And I want everybody to do this practice before we end our session for today. Build your power trio. Go ahead and put that in the comments if you will put the word power trio in there, power trio, okay? We're gonna build our power trio. Now, do this today, do this 
this week your three most recent accomplishments? What are your three most recent accomplishments? What are the three biggest lessons you've learned along the way? In three words that summarize who you are as an individual. Build your power trio. Your power trio. What is this going to do? It keeps you current. Now imagine that, Carbella, if you write not now, you write down three things that you accomplished. It mm-hmm. might be I had a full eight hours of sleep because you might be losing sleep mm-hmm. and you feel accomplished because you slept the entire night. That's yes. an accomplishment because yes, sometimes we go through different things <laughs> that pull our energies, right? Man, mm-hmm. I slept eight hours. Eight hours. Wow. You know, I slept well. I slept through the night. Right. And I know that might to someone may not be an accomplishment, but see when you have your power trio and I'm just using that as an example, and you might say, I worked out twice this week. I went for a walk this week because last week I did not. Why are we saying we need a power trio? What that does is it, it builds you, your capacity. It builds your competencies. So I want you to write down three most recent accomplishments the three biggest lessons you've learned along the way and three words that summarize you, who you are as an individual. And so if you put this in as a monthly practice, uh, perhaps in your work, in your job, in your roles, uh, in, in, in terms of maybe even in your journal, if that's what you use. But I think these are good ways to help us who we are and be able to really help strengthen our personal and our professional growth. Melanie, thoughts on that? The power trio. Everybody write in the chat, comments, power trio. Any thoughts? Yes, I think this is incredible. I think this is an incredible renewal practice because, like you said, it helps us to build our capacities and our competencies, and it keeps us moving forward instead of, it just really keeps our eyes focused and our eyes front. I believe it's a way of pouring into ourselves when we start to really look at, oh my goodness, what are the the three biggest lessons that I learned. And Mm. I think for me, looking at the lessons I learned will help me not to get back on the same road or to get on a new road and to do better. And so I really like that these practices are really great. And and, uh, I'm encouraging the Teton community to grab hold of the Power Trio for this week because I'm really, I'm going to dive into this as soon as we get off of the air. So this is really great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Power Trio, everybody. We're going to end yes, with the Power, power trio. trio. So if you're in a space where you can continue to relax and you're still pausing and resetting yourself, go ahead and start writing out your Power, power Trio today. Think through ways that you, uh, and I'll bring that back up one more time for everyone, just to again, your Power Trio, three most recent accomplishments, three biggest lessons you've learned along the way, in three words that summarize who you are as an individual. And that is your power trio. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. All right, folks, what's your takeaway from the renewal practices for today during our tea time? While you're putting that in the comments, what's your takeaways, what you learned that was new, maybe share something that was new for you or share something that you're going to implement. A few things I wanted us to, to share with everyone. We're going to bring up just a few announcements uh, so that you can be clear on who we are and what we're doing here at the Renewal Center. Um, wanted to just share with you a few things that are important to us. Of course, we have tea time each Tuesday, first, second, and third, as well as the fourth Tuesdays at seven. So uh, that's our what we're experiencing right now. And if you're new to, to tea time, I want to encourage you to download our mobile app and also be with us each Tuesday. Our Sundays, we have a new you digital discipleship. You can register for that on any of our sites and our social media sites as well, each Sunday at 10 a.m. Also each Wednesday, 7.30, we have a reforming culture course as well. We're studying the mind of Christ. Thank you for being a part of that. Also, each fifth Wednesday is our prayer, reformative prayer. Look forward to having you there. Also, we have grief recovery. If you've experienced any loss of any particular kind, we have certified grief recovery specialists here to help serve you. Please access us. And lastly, we want to encourage you to download our mobile app. Everything you need to know to connect with the Renewal Center is right there at your digital fingertips. 
We want you to be a part of the, our, that community. We have our Women at the Well series each first Saturday. Uh, we're currently studying Becoming a Woman of Purpose led by Pastor Carmela. Thank you for being a part of that. And of course, we want to encourage you. We are a nonprofit organization here in Concord, North Carolina. And one thing about the Renewal Center, we are really focused here on hospitality. Um, our location is, is so important. I mean, it's, we have spaces for reflection. We have spaces for uh, hospitality. We have a space for reading and thinking and renewing yourself. And so I just want to encourage you to support us here at the Renewal Center. Here are the ways that you can give and donate to the Renewal Center. Um, you can go to our website at renewalcenters.com forward slash give. And even things like the like Tea Time Tuesday, if this has benefited you, if this is added to you, we'd like you to consider donating to the RC. Um, your ways, PayPal, we have Zelle, which is the Renewal Center's 2020 at Gmail. Cash app, which is Cash Renewal Center. We also have Venmo at Renewal Center. And lastly, of course, you can mail a check or money order to our PO box. And so we want to say thank you for giving and donating to the Renewal Center. Thank you for being a part of our journey and supporting our mission from our team to you. We definitely appreciate you being a part of our Tea Time community. And if there's some takeaways today. Go ahead and place those in the comments. And lastly, I want to share with you on the ministry side of what we do here at the Renewal Center, we also have a prophetic gathering that's coming up April 12th and 13th. This year, we're going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. And so our theme for this year is, of course, Christ being formed in you. And so uh, we want to encourage you to be a part of that. It will be on site and virtual. It will be a hybrid experience. And it's going to be April 12th and 13th. We're excited about you being a part of it. Registration is there. You can go to propheticgathering.eventbrite.com. For more information, please reach out to the Renewal Center through all of our social media sites, our website, and of course, our mobile app. And so we're looking, we're excited about you being a part of that. So again, let's look at a few more comments, Carmel. I think we got coming in some takeaways. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's go. Let's read these. All right. Anita says that, this Anita says, I needed all of this today. All right, thank yes. you. Go right ahead. Okay, Miss Anita is saying, tell your own story and the ABCs you've shared for telling a story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Living in faith every day, her takeaway is measurable progress in reasonable time. Mm -hmm. And then Nicole is saying measurable progress in reasonable time. This is some great takeaways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Keisha, she's saying very reformative tea time. Thank you, Keisha. Mm -hmm. Michelle, take away. Curiosity gives way to new discoveries. All yes. right. Excellent. Thanks, everyone, for being a part of our tea time today. And we're just going to let the uh, announcements just scroll one more time as we close out our time with you today. And we look forward to it. As we say here at Renewal Center, I am Renewal. I am Renewal. Take care of each other, and we'll see you the next time, okay? Thanks so much, everyone.